Hey everybody, today I'm going to explain how to install a modern day Intel CPU and install a push pin style heatsink. Here is an Intel Core 2 Quad CPU, socket 775. First thing I'm going to do is make sure the pins or the contacts on the bottom of the CPU are good and clean. And if you're not clean, go ahead and use some rubbing alcohol or at least Windex on the paper towel to clean the bottom of the CPU. When you're working with a brand new motherboard, be sure to remove this plastic cover. And what you'll do is you'll pull this lever up to unlock the socket. And then gently lift this up and of course when you lift this up you can snap the cover out of place and drop the CPU in to where these markings line up as you can see here gently set it down in place And then the next step, you go ahead and flip this back down and then pull the lock and lever over the CPU itself. The CPU is now installed. Next step will be to clean your CPU and cooler, which I've already done. I'm going to have a close up look here at the CPU. And it's good and clean. We're going to have a look here at the base of the core, which this is a direct touch heat sink. The heat pipes directly touch the CPU. Sorry that my DXG camcorder is being dumb. It likes to play flicker flicker when the light gets a little bit low. Anyways, you want to have the base of your cooler and your CPU nice and clean. And the next step will be to apply some thermal compound. And here are my opinions on how you should do this. I always like to spread my paste on either the CPU or the base of the cooler. In this case we're going to be doing it on the base of the cooler since it's a heat pipe direct touch cooler because we want to make sure we get plenty of paste down inside the crevices of this heat sink to ensure good contact with the CPU. So I'll go ahead and get some Arctic Silver 5 which there are some coolers out there, well there's actually many on the market nowadays including the stock Intel coolers and they're brand new that will have thermal material already pre-attached to them and nowadays it's usually a basic thermal compound and I think if you're going to be doing some serious overclocking or you just want good cool performance overall it's best to get rid of that thermal compound and then put some Arctic Silver 5 on your heatsink or CPU and then uh, and of course go from there so go ahead and get a view here of the heatsink We're going to apply some thermal compound. Which, for those who are looking for Arctic Silver 5, you won't find at Best Buy, but you can get it at Radio Shack or off the internet. Most people get it off the internet, but luckily I found it at Radio Shack, so it's just a simple ride the road to get it for about 10 bucks. And it works really well for what it is. So. We'll go ahead and spread this out and we'll apply more if necessary to get in down into these cracks of the heat pipes.
And the thing about thermal paste is you don't want to apply too little, but at the same time you don't want to apply too much. That's also a really important thing. The purpose of thermal compound is to bridge the gaps, the tiny gaps on the base of the core so that way you get a good contact with your CPU. And without thermal paste you'll have a bunch of air in between these gaps which will hinder performance by a long shot. Your CPU will more than likely overheat if you don't install thermal paste onto your heatsink. Because when you look at your heatsink under a dissecting microscope, you'll definitely be able to see the cracks, or the valleys, I should say, in the heatsink. And you'd be surprised how big those cracks are, especially on cheap coolers. Now, another topic I want to talk about is lapping. Which you can look online, lapping is a process that involves sandpaper and glass to where you can smooth out these valleys and gaps to get a better connection between your CPU and heatsink. Which I have lapped this particular heatsink a little bit because it was really bad. It was in really bad shape. It it was really rough to the touch. And that's something you really do not want to have with. A heat sink. So, I'm going to apply this a hair a bit more. And we'll be finished and ready to go. Alrighty. There is the paste on the base of the core. Nice and shiny. So now I'm going to install the cord into place. Okay, now it's time to install the core. Now with these types of cords, heat pipe cords that blow air in a certain direction rather than down against the motherboard, I recommend having them turn to where they blow up toward the top of the computer or turned to where they blow toward the back of the computer. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the camcorder up a little bit so you can see inside the computer that's a bit, that this will be going to. As you might be able to see, well you actually can't see from this view, but the power supply in this computer <clears throat> has a big fan on the bottom of it, which draws a good bit of air, so we'll have the heat pipe cord blowing air up toward the top of the system. Which that's the good thing about these Intel style coolers is you can turn them whichever way you want. And that with AMDs, you're kind of limited. When you go to install a push pin style cooler, make sure that these pins are turned clockwise. So you can turn them counterclockwise, that's the unlock position. Turn them clockwise, they're in the lock position. Make sure all four of them are in the lock position. Then we'll go ahead and place our heatsink onto the motherboard and be careful because these pins tend to break kind of easy. I've This happened to me, it's happened to several people I've seen. That's one of the downsides to these push pin style coolers. But once you know it's sitting on the board ready to go, you're just going to start pushing it into place. You'll hear a click when the pins lock into place. And be easy on your board because, I mean, this can, this can put a stretch on the board and that's not good for it. We'll get the focus back. Anyways, the last one will usually be the hardest. As you might be able to hear it, just locked into place. And of course, it's very important. Be sure to install your install the wires going to the fan to the motherboard. 
That's the calmest tech that will cause your CPU to overheat in a matter of minutes. So go ahead and plug this connector into the CPU fan connector, which on this motherboard is right here. It is the four pin PWM connector. Some older motherboards only have three pin connectors for the CPU. Anyways, the core is installed and ready to go. Any questions or comments? Let me know.